Good afternoon, everybody. You know, I, I get the pleasure of working with Meredith and uh, Lindsay, who you'll meet later on, too, uh, at the clinic here. So it's, it's nice uh, us getting this getting together with this program. Um, I hope to be as precise with my timing as Meredith was, but uh, I never am. Um, so I'll get right into this. My the title of my program is Those Headaches May Be a Pain in the Neck. And as anybody on the uh, on this uh, program understands that headaches and neck pain uh, go along together quite you know, quite often. About 75% of people that are living with migraine disease report neck pain. Um, the question we don't know the to which we don't have an answer is whether the the neck pain and the musculoskeletal pain that is associated with migraines is a cause of or antecedent to uh, the migraine. But I really think that they're all just one big unhappy family. Uh, I, I suffer with, you know, with migraines myself and uh, commonly have associated neck pain with it. And uh, the program that I'm gonna uh, provide to you today is to give you some insights into some of the causes or contributions that your neck and upper back can have and even uh, up into your, your facial muscles uh, uh, that contribute to the global pain burden that may trigger your migraines or um, uh, may be associated with them. So my objective today is to, so, so to leave you with some understanding on what's called the cervical genic contributions to headaches. Cervical genic uh, is, is referring to the cervical spine, to the neck, uh, but I'm also gonna go up into some of the facial muscles as well. I want you to understand what trigger points are, how to do some self-assessment, and also some self-care strategies to help reduce them. Uh, and these are all things that I share with my patients on a, on a daily basis. Uh, that seem to uh, to provide good relief. This is how I look at pretty much most um, uh, non congenital disorders. You know things that uh, are developmental. That we all have a threshold. We have a stress strain threshold. That if we go over it, we go into that disease process. Be it migraine, be it you know a sprain or a strain, um, and. And some of us have a threshold that's extremely low, and some have a threshold that's extremely high. Uh, but either in either way, if we decrease our threshold or we increase the stress or strain on our whole body system, that pushes it pushes us into that disease process. Uh, in this case, of course, uh, it being migraine. So, what happens? Maybe one component of migraine may be that the strain that's in our whole global system exceeds our capacity to adapt to it or to even heal. So the things I'm going to look at are the postural and ergonomic stresses and strains that, that, are, that are placed on our neck and upper back and how to reduce that. So, because uh, oftentimes, you know, just these postural strains lead to micro trauma that, that cause some inflammation, that cause some pain in the tissue, that may, that may trigger muscle spasm, it may trigger joint pain. And I'm gonna have you explore in your own neck and upper back some of these common areas that a lot of people don't realize they have tenderness in, they have pain in, that could be contributing to, to, uh, to, headache, uh, to headache onset or headache attacks. Also, as you all know, you know lifestyle is a major cause uh, of migraine attacks. And um, so this is what this whole program, of course, is about. Some stress care remedies that we like to offer are programs like Meredith just did with mindful stress reduction, I focus on postural correction, on timely breaks, and things that we can do throughout the day to reduce our, our global stress burden. Um, I want to teach you some a little, a little bit about some uh, self-massage and stretching techniques as well. And then Lindsay, of course, will take over and provide us some insights into nutrition. So let's jump into the anatomy of the problem. What I want to do is build a spine. I want to build a neck teach you a little bit about your neck, how you developed, why we have some of the, uh, the strains on our neck and uh, have you palpate in your own and love to get some feedback from you all, whether you feel some of the areas that I'm referring to. So anybody who wants to turn on a camera, you're welcome to do so. I love seeing faces uh, as we do this, um, but let's take a look at your spine. Your spine is made up of four major sections. We have the neck or the cervical spine. The upper back is the thoracic spine. The low back is referred to the lumbar spine, and then the, the tailbone and the, the coccyx are, the, are the, really the pelvic area. Uh, that's the sacral region. 
I'm going to concentrate mostly on the neck and upper back. Your neck, your, your, your spine has a, a series of curves in it that develop as you develop. In the, in the uterus, we are C-shaped. Our body is forward bent. And when we start to raise our head up, we start to get a curve in the neck. And when we begin to stand, we develop a curve in the lower back. Now, these curves offer flexibility to the spine. Uh, they also offer mobility. And there's a really nice balance point when they all line up that places a minimal amount of stress on the different joints and the discs and the muscles of your, of your, of your body. And in fact, if we can get a nice equal balance point, we can actually relax and let our muscles go and take away strain on the spine. The problem is most of us don't do that. Most of us place abnormal strain on our neck and back uh, that can lead to, you know, to pain and inflammation. This is your neck with all the muscles and everything else removed. Here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to feel the joints in the backside of your neck. So this is the backside of a spine. If we take our fingers and put them right in the middle of our spine and meet them in the center and slowly slide them out, you're going to go over a, you're, going to, you're going to go over a, a group of muscles. I'm going to feel this in just a second. And your fingers are going to then land on this area back and through here. This area through here is called the facet joints. So here's what I'd like you to do. Sit up straight and just bring your fingertips together behind your neck and just gently slide your fingers out to the side. The first thing that you encounter is a group of muscles called your erector spinae muscles. We're going to slide past those, and you'll notice your fingers now slide forward. And when they slide forward, they meet a, a, a flat area. That's where the joints are in your neck. Here's what I'd like you to do. Apply direct pressure forward in that area, and now move your head side to side, forward and back. Rotate your head from side to side as you're pushing on those areas. Does anybody feel, does that provoke? discomfort for anybody. Typically, in, in a, yes, in a classroom that we teach, you know, we all have eight or 10 people in there and nine out of 10 people will feel that there's tenderness in that area. Tenderness they didn't even know existed. Those are your facet joints. Those facet joints are the joints that allow your head to turn from side to side. They allow your head to bend forward and back. Those joints are just like the joints of other bodies, uh, other, other uh, areas of your, uh, of your body. They have a capsule around them. They're full of fluid and they have these slippery surfaces over which they glide as you move around. They are not supposed to be painful in the normal state. They're not supposed to be tender. If they are, there's been some abnormal strain to that area. When you bend your head forward, those joints open up. They stretch open and they open up, just like in this middle picture. When you bend your head backward, they close down. Now think about this. If you took your finger and you bent it all the way back, or you bent it all the way forward and held it there for a while, it's going to hurt. Unfortunately, this is what we do to our necks all day long. As we sit at computers or we sit in Zoom meetings uh, and we put extra strain or we sleep in the wrong position, we put strain on those joints. And those facet joints can get inflamed and they can become painful. And they don't just hurt where they are. They hurt in other areas as well. For example, this, this mapping here was made by um, injecting irritating substances into the joints of of, uh, of People's, of people's necks into the facet joints and asking, where do you feel the pain? And so facet joints can cause pain all the way up into the head, into the back of the head, or also all the way down into between the shoulder blades. And so when you're trying to localize the, where your pain is, it's really oftentimes difficult because these joints refer pain to other areas. Mm. In, any er in any area where the pain is referred, can, can also trigger muscle tension or muscle spasm or what's called trigger points in those areas as well. So it's not just you get a painful joint, but you also get a muscular reaction to that. Anyone who has, uh, who has undergone a facet joint block for their headaches uh, has had, a, had an injection into these joints or, or into the nerves around the joint in an attempt to reduce pain, reduce inflammation uh, and reduce muscle, uh, muscle tension around it.
So what are some of the common causes of facet joint irritation and pain? Number one is postural strain. The most common postural strain that we'll see is forward head carriage and rounded shoulders. The position that, and we're gonna talk about this as we go along in just a minute. So postural strain, really quite common. Right now, my practice is incredibly busy with, with patients with neck pain and headaches because they're spending all day long at computers and straining their necks. Uh, you can imagine if you're leaning forward on your, on your fist to look in your computer screen, what are you doing to your facet joints? You're compressing them, like taking that finger and jamming it backwards, inflaming it. At the end of the day, you don't know why you have a headache. Well, your headache may be that it's coming from a pain in the neck. Other things like occupational strain, people who look up a lot during their work, you'll see it in carpenters and people who work over, do a lot of overhead work, but also sleeping position. Anyone who sleeps on the stomach is straining their neck. If you sleep on your side with good support or on your back with good support, you can alleviate that, but you're not designed really to sleep stomach down because your head has to turn and bend backwards. And again, now think of the analogy of the finger, you know, bending your finger backwards and bending it to the side, it's going to hurt, does that to your neck. So we cause micro trauma, which ultimately causes inflammation, and then can ultimately lead to arthritis in those joints. But tying all this together is connective tissue, connective tissue in the form of ligaments, uh, fascia, um, and, and what's really important about connective tissue is it adapts to the stresses you place on it. If you overstretch connective tissue, it elongates. If you understretch it and don't put enough strain on it, it contracts, it shortens, and it actually remodels. So a person who habitually sits in a bad posture, their connective tissue um, remodels around that to support it. And now someone says to you, well, sit up straight. Come on, you got to sit up straight to get out of that strain. You can't because your soft tissues are supporting the bad position. We need to remodel soft tissues and then retrain them to, to, accept, you know, to accept a new position. We need to retrain your brain, your soft tissues, and your muscles to get out of those bad positions. And I'm going to give you two exercises at the end of this that are designed to help you do that. What I want to focus on is what's called the myofascial or myofascial causes of what's called cranial facial pain or from the neck up into the head. I want to introduce you to trigger points. You may refer to them as knots in your back, but trigger points actually have distinct characteristics. They are tender points or bands within muscles that cause local pain or cause pain referred to other areas. They cause your muscles to become stiff, and if you strum across them, you may get actually a jump response. Like when someone goes to massage knots in your neck and you, and you, you jump or you really react to it, that's an involuntary reaction to a trigger point. Trigger points, again, can cause local pain or pain referred to other areas. And I'm going to introduce you to the four major, major ones that contribute to cranial facial pain. But first, I want to talk a little bit about treatment because I want to precede the, the, uh, the, the workshop piece of this with some treatment. How do you get rid of trigger points? Well, a lot of you have probably already had trigger point injections, but there are other ways around it. I think what we need to do is first step back and first try something called trigger point massage. Trigger point therapy or trigger point massage is a very specific type of massage during which pressure is applied to the, the trigger points and it elicits the pain or symptoms that the person is experiencing from that. Over, time, over a few seconds to 30 seconds, the pain dissipates. Then more pressure is then applied to it, again, triggers some of that pain. We do several cycles of that in order to react, uh, reflexively reduce those trigger points. I also like to add an element of stretching to the points. So I think adding compression and stretching best elongates the soft tissue and frees it up to reduce trigger points. If that doesn't work, certainly jump into things like dry needling or trigger point injections. But regardless of what we do to reduce our trigger points, we need to reduce the strain that's causing them. If that strain is postural, you, if we don't address it, you're going to keep coming back until we do so. So these are the key trigger points that I want to address with you. And you may see heads nodding up. Yep, I know those already. Uh, but let me introduce you to, in some detail here. Your trapezius is probably the most common muscle to develop trigger points. The trapezius attaches to the base of your skull, to every one of the vertebrae of your neck, to every one of the vertebrae in your upper back. 
and then it goes right out into your shoulder blades, onto your scapulae, and even onto your clavicle, into the front, uh, into the front of your of your uh, shoulder, your shoulder girdle. So it wraps all the way around into here. This muscle does this. It bends your head from side to side. It rotates your head from side to side. It pulls your shoulder blades up. It pulls them down. It bends your head back. It has a lot of different functions. It is used throughout the day. And unfortunately, many people, it's used way too much. The trapezius muscle can cause pain, not just locally, but in these areas. And here's what I'd like you to try to do. We're going to try to see if we can, and, and if, you're, if you're comfortable with it, see if you can compress some of these trigger points on yourself. And the most common area is this portion of your upper trapezius. What I'd like you to do is just reach over to your opposite shoulder, feel this muscle bulk in through here, and you can grab it, you know, with a, a, a broad contact or even a pincher contact. And what I'd like you to do is just kind of roll your fingers over that muscle and see if you have some tender points in there that you might feel like are knots. As you apply pressure to that tender point and it hurts locally, do you feel it hurt anywhere else? Right now, when I squeeze that, I feel pain at the side of my temple. The interesting thing about trigger points is that in the areas where they cause pain, it can cause trigger points to develop in those areas. So a lot of people will get trigger points in the, the muscle in the temple here as well, but the actual root cause of it could be in the upper trapezius region. So squeezing that point right there, adding deep compression to it, eliciting that pain, holding it for say 30 seconds until the pain dissipates. And then as it dissipates, add more pressure and go through several cycles of that. I'm gonna show you an easy way to do this in just a minute. Easiest way to do it is have somebody else do it, of course, but most people complain that, you know, it, it hurts their hands. So I'll give you a couple of tools for that um, <laughs> to, to take away that excuse. Uh, and you can see the ones also in the lower portion of that trapezius can even cause pain at the base of the skull. So when to go to someone who is kind of accomplished in, in myofascial evaluation, they'll be poking around in all these areas to say, hey, does that elicit your pain? And is that pain similar to what you experience? And that's really important. It could just cause pain, but we want it to be similar to that which you experience. So what causes these trapezius, trapezius trigger points to develop? Very commonly, shoulder problems. If you have a shoulder problem, you have to overuse your trapezius to reach every time you do it. It's going to cause some strain to it. Another thing is head tilt. That head tilt could be, I've got a computer screen over there. I've got one over here and I'm back and forth, tilting my head back and forth to look at them. Really common though is this forward head carriage posturing that we see so many people doing now. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. This time of the year, I see trigger points and headaches uh, and, and neck headaches and neck stiffness develop where people leave the window open a little bit just to get a nice cool breeze in there. Cool breeze blows in their, on their shoulders and their neck. They shiver a little bit. And shiver is your body's attempt to warm up. And just that little shiver can trigger some, some of these trigger points. But also poor pillow support and just muscle imbalances. So let's stretch this muscle a little bit. What I'd like you to do is to slide forward on your chair, sit right up straight. And what you're going to first do is bring your fingertips over to your ear on the opposite side. When we stretch, we try to elongate, not tear the tissue. So what we want to do is reach down with your opposite hand, let your head drop to the side. And all that I want you to do is let your fingertips grasp the, the, your, your, your scalp and just let the weight of your arm do the pulling. And while you're there, you take in a deep breath. Exhale and let the stretch happen. We don't need to pull. Just let the weight of your arm do the work. I prefer 30 second stretches or about three breath cycles on each side. If you're worried about your neck muscles tensing up as you return, resist coming back to neutral. And that will help you uh, reduce the chances of some spasm occurring. We do the opposite side. We reach over the top, fingertips just above the ear, drop your head to the side. And while we're there, we take in a deep breath. Let the weight of your arm do the work. Just let your head follow, don't pull on it. And again, to return back to neutral, head can be pushed back up. 
that gets one portion of your trapezius muscle. The other important portion of your trapezius muscle is this. What I want you to do next is turn your head as though you're looking into your shirt pocket. If you had a shirt pocket, reach your arm over the top. So you're looking into, you're really looking into your elbow and let your head drop forward. You'll feel tension develop in the front portion of that muscle. That's the portion where most of the trigger points uh, occur. So looking into your shirt pocket, tilting your head forward and just letting it stretch. And again, while you're here, take a deep breath in, exhale and let it stretch out. When should you stretch? Anytime. Do it throughout the day. I think stretching is important to be repeated throughout the day. I get to do it with my patients all day long. Um, and so I think, you know, to elongate tissue, we really need to have repetition. I'd like you to do it several times a day, 30 second holds. Remember I said I like compression with my stretching? There are great devices out there so you can apply compression to, you know, to an area to stretch it out. This is one called the Theracane. The Theracane has a, knob, a knob on the end where we can actually place it on the trigger point, get some leverage to push down on it. And while we're pressing down on that trigger point, then we could stretch right through it. I'll even use some lubricant like a lotion and put it right on that area, compress it, stretch it as I slide the Theracane through that trigger point. And Katie, I was gonna tell you, you're welcome to share these slides, uh, this slide group with everybody so they can have the pictures. Um, anybody who'd like to, to have this, you're welcome to share it. Perfect, thank you. Um, we, we will share them um, with the group on our uh, website. Great, thank you. Thank you, yeah. All right, next muscle group, really important one. You're all gonna be familiar with this when you feel it. What I'd like you to do is take your thumbs, and then slide them down the base of your skull on both sides. You're gonna slide them down. What you're gonna find is that you kind of come around this, around a curve and they go, and your thumbs go forward, holding deep, you know, holding some deep pressure in there. Now tilt your head side to side, bend it forward and back just very lightly as you apply pressure in there. These are what's called your suboccipital muscles. Lying down is a good way to do this as well. If you lay down, you can let your head relax back. So you apply deep pressure in there. I'll use my fingertips or my thumbs and, and then tilt forward back side to side. These muscles are used for fine head movements, so like slight tilts and slight rotations side to side. And when they cause pain, they cause a band of pain around the head. So a lot of people say they get, this is like the classic muscle tension headache. That, that radiates pain around the head. It feels like pressure that develops around the head. Interesting thing about this group of muscles, the, it lays underneath the trapezius, but going through the trapezius is a couple of nerves that I showed you at the bottom here. Uh, these, these little nerves that are coming up through here, if they get irritated and compressed, they can cause pain up the backside of your head or pain or numbness. A lot of people will say that I can't even lay my head back because if I do, if I apply pressure here, it triggers a headache. Well, this is where nerve blocks are commonly done. These occipital nerve blocks. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so, you know, the, um, when, you're, when you're palpating around in here and you're putting your fingers in this area, you may notice you can actually feel those little tiny nerves. And if they're really sensitive, it can be partly because of the tension in that trapezius muscle, uh, but also um, sensitivity may develop in that area from the trigger points in the, uh, in the occipital muscles. Here's my favorite tool. You can spend $30 on a cranial cradle or you can buy two tennis balls and put them into a sock. Tie it off really tight, lie on a surface. Uh, if you have hardwood floors, put a, put a towel down so it doesn't fly out of your way. But lie back on your, put this underneath the base of your skull, two, one, one on each side of the base of your skull and roll your head forward and side to side. It's a great way to massage these muscles out. Spend about two minutes doing it. I'll oftentimes precede it with just a hot pack and then lie back there. And when patients come into me, I just 
curl my fingers underneath that area and apply deep pressure. It's a great way to do trigger point massage. But you can really do it at home, some of this at home, with either lacrosse balls or tennis balls. Either works really quite nicely. And here's the big doozy of them all. The sternocleidomastoid, the most overlooked muscle when it comes to uh, when it comes to cranial facial pain. The sternocleidomastoid attaches on a bone, the base of your skull, called your mastoid process, and then comes around and attaches onto your your breastbone, your sternum, and onto your uh, collarbones, uh, your clavicles. So it's called sternocleidomastoid. You can see it on people. You know this this big muscle that comes across the front here. It's the most overlooked muscle when it comes to headaches. And most of my patients that I squeeze, they say, whoa, wait a second, nobody's ever touched that. Uh, I want you to touch it because this muscle can cause pain around your eye and deep into your ear. What I like you to do is just reach across and see if you can get just a, uh, pinch your grip on this muscle. If you're pinching the skin, you're not going to get there, but you actually have to go around. You may have to tilt your head to the side to get to it but I find reaching across to be the best way to get to it. I always get the question, well, what if, you know, am I gonna get an artery or vein? No, you're not gonna, if it has a pulse, you're not gonna squeeze it. Um, and so, but you can actually roll that muscle in through there going up and down of it, uh, up and down on it, it's just a gentle compression. And if you squeeze it, you may feel the pain come right up and around your eye and into your cheek area. And try the opposite side as well. Now, if you're able to get a, a nice pinch your grip on that, there's a treatment you can do for yourself. You reach across, you pinch that muscle, and then turn your head towards the side that you're pinching. And you notice your fingers will glide right over the muscle as you're doing that. This is our compress and stretch technique for this. So we're compressing, and stretching as we turn. Even it up on the opposite side. We're going to compress, turn, and stretch. So my migraine is on my right side. Yep. And it's my right side that I feel everything in. Is that normal? Very common, absolutely. So, so then, yeah, the the this this big unhappy family, right? We have we have the the myofascial component to this. I mean, it may be that your migraine is triggering all of this, but this adds here this global pain burden. What I've seen in some patients with these uh, with like um, uh, Amavig and some of the other uh, CGR uh, CGRP maps um, that a lot of this muscle pain and tension melts away. A substantial portion of it did with six, when when they had uh, successful treatment with that. Um, you know, I see patients get on muscle relaxants, trigger point injections, all different options. But I really think that addressing it manually is really a, a key component as well. Great. I, I don't know why green lines keep on popping up on my screen here, but they are. It's uh, I don't know if it's happening on your side too, but no. Okay, good. <laughs> So we can stretch this muscle also. If you don't want to compress it, we can just stretch it. What I'd like you to do is anchor your hand at the front of your chair. You're going to turn your head to the opposite side and just gently drop it back. And you feel a nice, deep stretch, comfortable stretch coming along the front side of your neck here. As you tilt your head forward, it increases the, the, uh, the, the stretch component. And again, just hold it there for 30 seconds. It should not pinch on the back on the opposite side. If it's pinching on the opposite side, you may have to you may have to go to one of these other techniques. <laughs> what causes trigger points in here? Really common clenching of your jaw. Uh, and, and how many of us have <laughs> how many of us clench our jaws as part of uh, as part of our headache our headache complex? It's uh, it's quite common. Another one that we see right now is with progressive lenses. People who are tilting their head up and down to use that progressive lens. I recommend if you're spending a lot of time in front of a computer, get a fixed focal plane uh, glasses to use at the computer and the you progresses for outside of that. So that you're not constantly tilting your head up and down. And you're gonna notice this common theme that I'll say is forward head carriage. Uh, Katie, I can do a time check with you too, so that... Uh... It is uh, 307, so you're you're just a little bit over. 
Okay, so <laughs> I want to get to. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, you're you're okay. Um, I told Lindsay we were a little behind, so Great. you're okay. Great, thank you. The other key muscles I want to address real quickly are your your masseter and your temporalis, ones around your TMJ. Because we clench so much, what I want you to do is just put your fingers across your right on your face and clench your jaw. That's your masseter muscle. What I'd like you to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, slide your fingertips through that muscle, back and forth, strumming back and forth. You'll really frequently pick up tender points that radiate pain above your eyes. So if you're getting headaches above your eyes, think masseter muscle, think sternocleidomastoid muscle, and even think the suboccipital muscles as potentially contributing to that. To stretch this muscle, we apply deep pressure as we open the jaw and stretch open. Compress right underneath your, your, your um, I used to use the knuckles here, compress in through here and open wide and stretch. We combine that with the temporalis muscle. The temporalis muscle, you put your fingers above your ears and clench your teeth, you're gonna feel that muscle. This can cause just temporal headaches, even pain radiate into your teeth. In order to stretch that and compress it, we're gonna apply our thumbs above the cheekbone, compressing in and open wide. I know it's very attractive to watch me do this, uh, but the, uh, my, my recommended nighttime routine is 10 minutes of a hot pack with some mindfulness um, uh, exercises, wrap a hot pack around your face, and then spend two or three minutes just doing this compress and stretch technique. You're gonna find that your facial muscles, your, your power oral muscles really do relax nicely. And you'll feel it, it just feels much looser and it can give you a lightness to your head as well. And I know I'm running over time, so I wanna jump to the two key exercises that I want you to do for your posture. Um, so if you, if you give me one second here, I am gonna do that. I always, as, as, as I said before, I always give too much stuff. <laughs> no, this is great stuff. It, it hurts good, I always say. <laughs> That's my that's my mantra. It hurts good because so many of the so many of the things you're showing is exactly where my pain is, and probably a lot of our pain. Someone someone typed "ow." <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I I, I I am a headache in and of myself. Uh, um, no, but I think she probably meant "ow" good. But oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want you to support your neck when sleeping. There are two common pillows that I recommend. Number one is called the Jackson Servi Pillow, which is this one down on the right. And the other is called the McKenzie Cervical Roll. What they do is support your neck while you're lying on your side or back. If you have a smaller neck, I use the McKenzie Roll. If you have a bigger neck, I use the Jackson Cervical Pillow. It supports your neck and then you put your regular pillow underneath your head to support that. It takes a lot of strain off that area. Uh, it's great for side sleeping as well. If you can't get yourself out of stomach sleeping, my recommendation is to buy a weighted blanket. Having that pressure against the front of yourself can be really calming. Um, and a lot of people sleep face down because they like that, that it's a comfortable position, a protective position. So I wanted to make sure I got this piece in here. But here are my two key postural exercises. Most important thing I'm gonna teach you right here. I want you to do is get Front, you know, get close to the edge of your chair, front of your chair. I want you to turn your palms face up. Lift your sternum up and pull your shoulder blades down, back and together. And notice where my shoulders go. They go down this way, they don't come up. Shoulder blades come down, back and together. I turn my arms out as far as they'll go and pull my elbows forward. I'm gonna hold that position while I tuck my chin straight in. Why am I doing this? I'm doing it because I'm stretching the front of my chest, stretching the muscles in the back of my neck and activating the muscles that pull my shoulder blades down. It's undoing this posture that everyone gets into. So it's, it's what we do is again, lift the sternum, arms turn out as far as they'll go, elbows come forward and chin tucks straight in. Now notice the bottom line. 
10 seconds every hour. If you do it right, in about two days, you're going to be sore all over. And you've only done a couple of minutes of exercise. Why am I having to do it so frequently? Because I want to remodel the soft tissues that I mentioned before. Remember I said the soft tissues and fascia are remodeled to the stresses we place on them. This overcorrects it and helps to drop that down. Second exercise I want you to really do is this one called wall angels. You'll notice that she's squatting up against the wall. And so she's got a, she's squatting down, wrists and elbows go up against the wall. And all that she's doing is pushing in and raising her arms up and down, just like that. It looks like nothing until you try it. <laughs> I recommend 10 repetitions, morning, afternoon, and evening. It's three times a day, you do 10 repetitions, and that's gonna help to open this area up and tone up the muscles that pull your shoulder blades back. Many of you won't even be able to touch the wall with your wrists and elbows because it'll be so tight in the front. Many of you won't be able to bring your head back in. Don't worry about that. You'll get there. It may take months to get there, but that tissue will remodel over time. And it works beautifully when in combination with this other postural corrective technique. So again, my recommendation to you is we do these last two postural corrective exercises that'll be on, that'll be available to you. Number two, let's get some trigger point work in with identifying those points compressing them and stretching them to help relieve those. Excellent. Great advice. Thank you. And I was just saying in my support group on Wednesday, I really need to work on my posture. <laughs> so you, you're helping me. Thank you. We all do. <laughs> yeah, I'm really bad at it, um, especially in front of the computer so much. Thank yeah. you so much. And um, we really appreciate your time. And I'm going to um, use, use your information. Great, thanks so much. So um, I am going to introduce